limo cars. So these are the cars that are currently being tested out, okay, in certain areas and they are, they don't have drivers <laughs> and they pick people up, okay. So those are the Waymo cars and I was trying to, you know, kind of wrap my head around it but every time I see one it just for some reason it sets off like an alarm bell to me okay um there's something about it that just does not feel right and I just have like a vision of these cars just being used somewhere down the road as a form of warfare or, or weapon in some way okay so I looked up the Waymo cars today I wanted to see who was creating these cars and actually, I wrote it all down um when I looked it up, okay, so these are created by Google, okay? So Google is owned by the parent company Alphabet Inc., okay? Um, and Alphabet Inc., the owner is Sundar Pichal, okay? That's his name. And so I was just like immediately, once I hear Google, I immediately just think, oh, Bill Gates, you know what I mean? Like that's what I'm thinking in my mind. Um, and so, I was thinking, okay, this might be a little bit of a red flag. Um, I've also was thinking about how these cars are working, essentially, because a lot of these technologies are working off of alien technologies. I was also thinking in terms of, uh, I was thinking maybe it's hooked into some kind of a technology grid in some way, and is that grid energetically something that's kind of like over our heads creating almost like a force field or magnetic field of energy um and then i started to think about trap matrix so to speak like what are they hooked into and are they almost in some way creating some type of a grid system over us either similar to 5g or connected to 5g um that kind of traps us like i just feel like a trap energy around the waymo cars okay so i kind of wanted to just um put that out there for you guys uh it's just something that i am just like being red flagged on like these cars are very dangerous like this is not smart this is this is something where there's no one in these cars. These are computer generated cars. Any type of technology can be hacked into. We know this now. And, and to me, however, selling it out to the cities um, that they're in, it's like red flag all around. That's kind of like the messages I've been getting around those specific cars. I just wanna see if the chat is working. Can you guys let me know if that is on right now? Or you guys, can somebody um, write a message just so I can just make sure that it's working? All right, the other thing that was like really interesting about Alphabet Inc, I was noticing is that a lot of them are Stanford University, okay? I just thought that was like really, really interesting. And the co-founder, um, Sergey Brin is Russian, okay? And he specializes in computer science, okay? So I just kind of wanted to just put that there for you guys. The board is John Hennessy, he's Stanford, it's all Stanford. There was something else I just kind of want to mention about Stanford is that when I was reading on who created COVID-19, the bio, I can't, I don't know if I'm allowed to even talk about it, I'm not gonna say. Um, I was getting messages um, in regards to Stanford, okay, specifically Stanford. <laughs> And now I'm looking at the Alphabet Inc. and it's all Stanford. Um, so I just thought that was like a little odd. Okay, so we just get a hello. Hello, welcome. Welcome to the live, guys. Welcome. Good morning. Um, so yeah, so I just thought that was kind of like really interesting. And then obviously I was just looking at the big five, okay, which is all the techie companies. And that's connected to the NASDAQ, which I did get messages around the NASDAQ. Um, I want to say it was like a year or so ago. I did a reading about the NASDAQ. Um, that's something that we should be looking at very closely um, in terms of the markets and determining the markets and like uh, in terms of almost like a predictable market or in terms of I was almost even getting like like something going on with the legality of the market like like a, predict a predictability a way of rigging almost the market in some way hi Polly welcome welcome okay so that was like the first thing coming up so I just want to see what you guys were picking up if there was anything that you guys were picking up other messages I was getting was around Manhattan okay and definitely real strong infiltration energies in Manhattan, okay? And that can take us back to Wall Street. So something just really interesting that, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Kelly Loeffler was married to, I don't know if she is still married, but she was married to um, the owner of the World Stock Exchange, okay? So that's just an interesting thing just because of the connections and ties to Trump, all right? So maybe that goes into more of like that inside network so to speak and we've seen you know wolf of wall street uh, we've seen the big short okay and they talk about these manipulated markets are manipulated predictable um type of deals okay that they're doing between the banks um hedge funds has been coming up really strongly um the crypto wallets is coming up really strongly in terms of how they're using crypto wallets to build their money okay um i was getting a lot of messages that they were hooking humans up to wallets okay 
<laughs> i.e. me. Um, you know, I am like I am like sleeping at night and waking to people with machines on my head. That's what I wake up to every morning. I wake up to some kind of a freaking machine on my freaking head. And I have to clear it off. It's like almost like skins, like leather like skins with wires on them on my head that I have to clear off like every day but it feels like I'm hooked up like a machine that is working on me and when I'm trying to clear these energies the that are coming up are like North Korea and Russia okay and then I think well I'm in America <laughs> we're in trouble guys <laughs> if, that's, if that's actually what's going on right now and I, I can't help but think how are they hooking up how are they hooking up to our energy levels? how are they hooking up to us I had a dream about Elon last night I was somewhere with him um he had an air, a private jet. He had a private jet. And I was like about to go on his jet. And I'm like, why is Elon here? <laughs> what do you, it was an odd dream because I don't consider, I, me and him, I'm like, oh, i like, <laughs> pretty sure I was one of his lab rats, okay, for, for his, his chipping. And so I'm like, when I see him in the dream state, we, I, we were both looking at each other like, <laughs> I feel like he wanted to get a good look at me. Because <laughs> I don't know what's going on with Elon right now. <laughs> I don't know. We were eyeing each other or we're not. Suspect. <laughs> We're sussing each other out right now. So yeah, so um, there's definitely like a lot of stuff going on, obviously. I feel like there was a lot of really, really, look at this, like this lighting. I don't know if you guys can see this like strange lighting, but I feel like there was like a lot of these dark kind of technology space plans that were in the works. And I do feel like some of them have actually been thwarted. Like I'm not gonna lie, like I feel like it was, it's a, it was supposed to be way worse than it is now. So if that gives you guys any kind of solace at all. I feel like it was supposed to be like way, way worse. And I feel like we're on top of things. I just got justice for that. And I got some kind of military coming through. So I do think that we are definitely moving in the right direction in terms of getting a hold on this situation, okay, with whatever this technology situation is. Like, cue noise. Can you guys hear the noise right now? <laughs> Ink's going live. Can we, can we please? <laughs> Get the long guys going, okay? <laughs> I was doing some more channel, actually. I was sending my channel love, and I, I was sending my subscribers love, and I, I sensed that all there was my subscribers were not actually attached to my channel. Like, they were two separate entities. I was like, well, that one, my subscriber count never changes. <laughs> like, it's completely rigged, guys. Like my, like, my whole channel is just like a freaking, I think it's just like a facade. <laughs> it's like a, my channel. <laughs> it doesn't connect into any like real audiences. Like I have like a, I have, like a phone. <laughs> like the Truman Show. My channel is the Truman Show. Anyway, um, all right, let's see. Is there anything you guys wanted me to read on? Oh, thanks, Melissa. So thank you for being strong. I wouldn't know how to do it. Please keep fighting. Thank you. Every day is a new freak. I am in the, I'm on the, 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 front, the front lines, guys. I'm on the front lines. I don't know where I am, but I'm everywhere. I'm ominous. <laughs> I'm omnipresent. I am kind of realizing that whatever I, whatever I got into with this channel, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Like, I had a lot of dreams, you know, since like 2018. So I don't even remember. I had a lot of dreams, and I'm just realizing, like, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I, I there's some weird shit that's been going on. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I feel like I see things that might be supposed to, like, I'm not supposed to be seeing, but I see them in some regard. I, I just, but it's like all of it keeps coming back around. It's, it's coming back around, like, for me, all of these dreams that I've had. Like, it's not an accident. Like, these dreams are a key and symbolic to some crazy stuff that has gone on. And I'm just realizing just how important the dreams are right now. So there is this kickback up of energy because I feel like they messed with the Akashic Records. I feel like they deleted Akashic. I, I don't want to say I felt. I know they deleted the Akashic Records through their technologies. They are able to break in with these patents into soul contracts and things like that. And I had felt that they deleted a lot of Akashic Records and messed with a lot of the Akashic Records. And so for us as lightworkers, if you guys are lightworkers, consider yourself lightworkers. You guys can always send love energy to all Akashic Records, deleted records. Just send them love energies. Restore, say in colon prayers to restore them. Bringing them back to light. Um, it's almost like they just go dark in a way, or it's like the it's like the energies aren't there. And I think a lot of readers, when they're reading on a lot of topics, they might not be able to recognize that the information is just not there. It's not like coming into the reading because the record's not there. It's like it's buried under some kind of like black magic or something like that. So a lot of times it's hard to like get the right messages. It also affects our justice department. You know, it affects like system, our justice systems, okay, agencies. When everything gets goes dark under under black magic, and I feel like it got ramped up through a lot of the space technology black magic, um, manipulations of energies, time and space, you know that kind of thing. So a lot of that's coming to light now in terms of why we haven't really seen the level of justice or haven't gotten the information, like all this information coming to light, Ten of Wands. Like it's like a lot of stuff that we didn't know winning. And perhaps agents have to wake up, agencies have to wake up, law enforcement wake up to this type of warfare and the level that it was. Everyone kept saying Teflon, Teflon, Don. You know, listen to the catchphrases, okay? They're saying something in those catchphrases. You know, another one of the catchphrases that I was thinking about um, was tiny hands. They called they called they called Donald Trump tiny hands. I never thought he had really tiny hands though. <laughs> Think about the nick tiny hands. I think he's directly connected to pedophilia and, and, and um, trafficking, right? He's definitely connected to child trafficking. And I think the nickname is something else, you know what I mean? So I think it's just some things that are gonna start to come to light more and more. Um, all this stuff has come up with his ties to, to Epstein, whereas all the right-wing bought paid media, all the paid influencers on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Trumpers would say, oh, Trump's not on the list. Trump, Trump didn't do this, Trump didn't do that. There are ties to Trump and Epstein 
direct ties. I mean, the B-roll on half of freaking news channels of Trumpy Dump was him dancing with Jeffrey Epstein at an event. You know, this is not new, but it's new to his base. His base doesn't get the connection to him and these rings. And that's a huge part of what's hidden, okay? That's a huge part of what's hidden is how what he's really connected to. Um, and how dark it is. You know, Bill Barr did it, Jeffrey Epstein, um, a day before he suddenly died. And, and, and the cameras happened to be out. There happened to be no prison guard. Like, so, like, I brought this up before. Bill Barr's a Manhattan boy, okay? That's his freaking stomping ground. He's former CIA. I don't think a lot of people know that about Bill Barr, okay? Um, in terms of what really is going on. Um, but I've gotten direct ties to him, direct ties to this whole ring, this underground ring. And also, there was a meeting between Bill Gates and Epstein, okay? I don't remember. It was like 2000. 19 or 18, 19. And there's something really important about that meeting, and it goes into Microsoft, Google. I was getting really strong messages around voice bots, Google voice bots that can pick up on our voice, but like our voice. Okay, if we say something, it, it goes out, and it's not necessarily connected to our phones, guys, because they have this other technology now. They have a, a more higher evolved technologies that are around us. They have bots all now through chemtrails, okay? For example, um, check your sky. The skies are full of chemtrails. They're full of them now. And that's corporations. You know, I was watching someone who worked for, who was former Air Force, who was responsible for, you know, what was going out through the military. And she stumbled upon um, the chemicals that are go were going out. And she said the more she asked questions, the more she was silenced. And she, she found out real quick, you don't ask questions. And that, it was corporations um, that was, paying essentially for these chemtrails to go out. So it's definitely um, something that I think a lot of us are definitely waking up to. I had talked about this spiritual warfare, this holy war about a year or so ago, I started coming out with those messages and now it looks like a lot of people have caught up to that. A lot of content YouTube creators are, are now aware of the spiritual war. Like people are starting to get messages now. You know, at the time I when I was saying it, it might've felt like a little, what is she talking about? But now it's coming to light. Everything is coming to light to the level of the spiritual order. And it's going to continue coming to light because it's something we all have to understand if we want open democracy, if we want a working justice system. It's something we all have to freaking understand. We have to understand the threats of these technologies. We have to understand um, what they can do. They can program our lives. You know, they can um, they can break us into codes, okay? Um, everything is energy. They understand how to manipulate energy. They understand how to program people. They understand for however however they're doing it, they programmed me to be like capped out at, at a certain money right now, okay? Um, like for some reason, it's like only bring in a certain amount of income and it's just barely enough to cover my bills. You know what I mean? It's like they worked it out in some way that they could control and manipulate money. But I've also gotten messages that somebody is like in my records, freaking billionaires, like in my records or in my money, <laughs> living off of my monies right now. Like I've gotten those same messages. Um, I, if I'm clearing energies around my money, I see like a man in my money. I'm like, dude, get out of my money, dude. Get out of my freaking money. Why are you in my money? <laughs> so, um, you know, there's stuff like that going on. Um, on the angels here, not angels here, but we did some meditation work um, during one of our meetups around our Akashic records. And we did a walkthrough where we were envisioning our Akashic records and what we saw when we opened them up. And there was like two or three of us did not, we had blank pages in our Akashic records. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they freaking just did our Akashic records, like they were just gone. So um, these are the things that I think we have to like really start waking up to. And a lot of like workers, star seeds, they have a lot of spiritual gifts now. They have enlightened to being able to work with their third eye more, work with these, you know, work with the divine, higher power, God, whoever, <laughs> to kind of tap in to these energies. Um, so I think right now um, there could be even a mass awakening around our money, a mass awakening around where did our money go? Where our money, this isn't my life. I've talked about the movie The Family Man. I'm like, this isn't my life. This is not my life. <laughs> I don't freaking, I don't, I don't own a tire company in New Jersey, <laughs> you know, like it's the same thing, like this has got to be a glimpse because it's not my life, like where did my life go, this is not it, I'm supposed to be somewhere, like, I could feel it energetically, I'm like this is not where I don't belong here, like I know exactly where I am right now, this is not my life, like I'm supposed to be somewhere else, like I'm supposed to be like in Manhattan right now or something, or I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be somewhere I'm not, you know, and like that's the energy right now, like I'm not where I'm supposed to be, somehow they're blocking out where we're supposed to go in some way right now. So um, Collective could be feeling some of those energies as well. You're like, this isn't my life. This is where I'm supposed to be. Um, I was getting messages last year about the DNA because 23andMe sold the DNA, okay? Um, and I don't know if you guys heard that news story go out. And if 23andMe has a snapshot, let's just say they have a certain amount of DNA of the world. So let's just say they have like, I don't even know the percentages. Let's just say they have 2%, 3% of the DNA or something like that, 1%. I mean, that's probably large if you're looking at like global, globally. But all they need is like a snapshot of you know, a certain amount of DNA before they can start to put together the pieces of bloodlines and things like that. And really just start to go, go through them. That's like a fly just landed on me as I'm saying that. And so once you freaking start figuring out the bloodlines and things like that, I feel like that's where they can start to infiltrate us on a level that is 
more, I guess, scientific or biological, okay? Um, so I have the moon card coming up with that. So there was a man. He looked like he was Indian, but I'm not really sure. I can't remember what country he was from, but he was not an American man. And he came on and he was saying that we have the science now with the DNA to basically live whatever life we wanted, okay? To live whatever life we wanted and take whatever we wanted through this type of DNA technology. And what I was getting messages on was that they were just taking like our, like our good karma, like like babies and people who are being born, um, people who have big life purposes, destinies, uh, just taking basically their codes and then just taking them. <laughs> That's kind of what I was getting energetically. They're just taking our DNA and then living out our lives. And I was getting a lot of this experimental stuff was going on through the metaverse, which is through meta and through the banks, uh, which PwC on record said that they were experimenting with, with long-term acquisition financial acquisition through the metaverse. I was like, that's our DNA you're at, you're acquiring right now, which could go back to for potentially crypto, okay? Um, going back to the crypto wallets in terms of energy, feeding off of our energy, our good energy, our DNA. You know, DNA is our, our codes, okay? So just something to kind of, I guess, think about right now. I have the moon around that. So this is stuff that's probably not yet come to the surface in terms of what's actually happening to people. But I'm telling you all, if you just feel like, if you're one of these people that just feels like your life just kind of like, like just kind of like bottomed out or just flat lines, you could be a victim of that kind of warfare, okay? You could potentially be one of those victims. And you know, you might be someone who has a, a big life purpose, a big destiny. Um, and people like Trump, they're looking for that because they don't have a big destiny. <laughs> they're desperate, they're pathetic. He's like, he stole his whole life. Like there's nothing, just like Jared Kushner's of the world, they were all supposed to be in prison already and bankrupt. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that was where they were supposed to be, but they're still hanging on, right? They still got their freaking press, they're, they still got their freaking platform. DT still on the freaking ballot, right? That stuff doesn't just come out of nowhere. No, he, he's using space technologies and black projects to access codes and records that are not his own and then taking them on okay he's taking on um the codes of other people's lives so when he's like on and he gets all the press and all the stuff that's that's what's going on he's working with these different technologies and that's how a lot of these evil people kind of stay in power i have like the freaking hangman reverse coming in around that they don't want us to talk about it but it's freaking true it's freaking true it is definitely freaking true and they have the technology now to do it i also was seeing that the ceo of pfizer um he's working with gene editing companies okay right now gene editing company do, do we want people to edit our genes <laughs> because that's part of the that's part of what i'm talking about okay editing is them taking <laughs> what they want they're like i'm gonna take her destiny we're just gonna put that here and i'm gonna take her <laughs> this and we're gonna just put it here we're editing out the genes to make our own masterpiece dna and we're gonna take it and then what happens is, is the victims of this dna um their life bottoms out okay they're like tanks okay they end up so we have to just be, be aware of this um and understand how to fix it so it's something i could definitely have as a topic um on patreon with my earth force base team or i can talk about it on the angel tier, tier a little bit more in terms of how spiritual light beings fight back okay against this warfare because it's dark i mean the visor ceo is a freaking he's as dark as it gets you know he's excited he was excited about reducing the population by 50 percent like in an evil way <laughs> like, uh, are you behind COVID? Are you, are you the guy? Are you connected to Stanford, dude? I'm pretty sure at this point in time, we can figure out who's behind COVID-19. I think it's pretty obvious you know, based on their interviews, who, who was behind this kind of warfare that went out and the vaccine on top of that. Um, so let's see, is there anything else you guys want me to read on today? I don't know if I saw any kind of um, thing on that. Just a little self promo. I just came out with some Truth Warrior tees and sweatshirts um, to promote us being Truth Warriors and speaking our truth and also others to speak their truth, okay? Um, and I also have the Justice tees with justice and equality on the tee. I feel like those just make a statement. I wear mine all the time and I just feel like I feel really badass in mine. It's just something really loud when you're promoting justice and equality. Um, they know where you stand, man. They know where you, you're standing with equality. You know, they know they know what, what side of the aisle you're on and they know what you're for. So, um, and also in light of, you know, Kamala Harris um, being endorsed by President Joe Biden um, as a presidential candidate for the 2024 election. Um, definitely, call, I, it feels super positive, okay? It's, it feels super, super positive. I don't know if candidate was the right word. Nominee. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's, it feels um, like energetically when I kick in, like pick up on the energy, it feels like a, a much needed change. Even in terms of preparing her for the presidency, it feels positive, like energetically positive. Um, whether or not that becomes however it turns into, it's something that has to happen. That's what I'm getting really strong. It has to happen. Whatever this preparation is for her has to happen. It's important. It's almost like a switch up of teams, a switch up of power leadership. It's something that has to happen right now. It feels, like I said, energetically really positive and really good. Um, definitely a good thing coming through so I have the three of Pentacles coming in for it so however it pans out I think it's just it's something that is good right now just even in terms of the switch up energy I have felt a shift within 24 hours I want to tell you in terms of our country in terms of even how I have felt protection wise my protections I have felt more protected um, because I feel that it's a switch up of just energies in general like it's a switch up of like I said leadership or in terms of I don't know. I don't know. There could be something with, I have felt, I did do a reading on Joe Biden and I, I was getting something about a breach of contract connected to his secret service. Um, I was getting something connected to a painting. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Randomly, and like the freaking garden house outside. There's like Melania's garden house or something. <laughs> I don't know. That was like a while back. 
but I was definitely getting something about like a breach of contract in his security. And so I think whatever the switch up is, getting chills on that is positive, okay? Because I think there's something connected to him that almost was like a block in some way, like it was like a door or a doorway or a window accidentally to something that was like uh, working against us internally. Okay, and so I felt a switch up in her energies because of the people around her camp are different than his camp. I'm getting chills on that. So I think, like, I felt safer. I'm going to say within that 24 hour time period, I felt safer. And so then, which means we could potentially find the hole or the breach of contract within maybe Joe Biden's, um, you know, Secret Service or whoever it is. But I was definitely getting that Trump infiltrated the Secret Service through the insurrection. And, you know, that's all connected to Charles Flynn and Mike Flynn and his whole freaking, where that whole insurrection crew, they're still, they were still, actually, that crew actually feels like since Kamala took over, I don't feel their energies anymore. I don't feel the insurrection crew. So I think that's what it's tied to. I think that's what the breach of contract was tied to. I think there were cover-ups within that Secret Service. I did do a reading recently about the White House Secret Service and a baby. There was like a reading around that. I think that's what the connection was. Or something was in there. So yeah, I think it almost is like a way that we were able to even like get a hold of some holes in a way. We're still working on Manhattan though. I have, I still have the World Trade Center coming up. 9-11 is coming up so strong with Trump. Giuliani, it's still a hole. It comes in with Embry-Riddle, Florida, Air Force, like that. There's a hole in our Air Force. There's a hole within our intelligence and CIA. There's a hole. There's a hole because of 9-11. George Bush, former CIA as well. Um, and as I just mentioned before, Bill Barr, former CIA. So a hole in there with maybe with ties to Jeffrey Epstein, perhaps. Something underground that we still don't have a hold on that we have to get a hold of. directly connected to Trump. It could be connected to elites um, or like secret societies. Uh, I always get uh, Bergdorf when I, when I get connections to Trump. It just feels like there is something still that is not right. There's a, there's a doorway to Russia through Manhattan. There's almost, it's almost like there's a, I don't know. There's some kind of a doorway to Russia through Manhattan. I was getting messages around the School of Rock being infiltrated by Russia, coming in through Scientology. I think it's John Travolta. I'm thinking it's John Travolta. I think he's the hole through Scientology to Russia. Like, I think he's the whole, oh, decade, over a decade ago that I accidentally went to. And I think he's the whole. I think, I think there's something with him and the Russians through Scientology. And I think it comes in through Trump and Mark Burnett. It comes in through, I think it comes in through Hollywood in some way. I think they're, the, I think they're, that's how they infiltrated Hollywood in the media is through John Travolta. And the interesting thing, guys, is that I have a connection to John Travolta that you guys don't understand. My dad grew up with John Travolta. They were neighbors. <laughs> And they played together all the time. And he hung out with my aunt and my cousin. <laughs> I have a direct tie to John Travolta. I think this is why this is all happening to me. I think it's because of the karma of my dad and John Travolta. Like, I think at the end of the day, this is why everything happened with my channel, with Wilson Bethel. Like, I think it's all connected to freaking John Travolta. Like, I'm kind of like, really like, convinced at this point in time, what <laughs> happened to me. Because they, my, my dad and him had beat, they didn't get along, they had issues. And I swear to God, there is something karmically, something effed up happened in New Jersey with him and my dad. And I swear I'm paying for it because of my dad. And I don't even talk to my dad anymore, but if I would get on the phone with him, I'd be like, dude, what the F do you freaking do? <laughs> that's, that's, that's my tie-in, okay? That is my freaking, that is my tie-in because I swear to God, I had an autograph photo, photo from him. He autographed, he knows who he, he knew who I was. He was, he was gunning for my dad. <laughs> he was gunning, he came back around because my dad bullied him. And I swear to God, there's like, there's something in here <laughs> that is freaking connected in. <laughs> to all of this, I'm telling you, there's something, something tied into this. Like, it's like he found out, he's like, I'm gonna find that guy and his kids, and now there's some kind of karma owned, owed, and that's how I got roped into all this crap. This is how I got roped into Russia and Scientology through John Travolta. <laughs> Everyone's like, shut up, shut up, Amy. There's just so many weird ties that I had to Manhattan growing up. It's just, it's just, it all makes sense now. Like, it all makes sense. Like, it's something, like, and it's like, and another really weird thing about me with my ties, because I was so big into the Mueller investigation, the FBI, like everything that was going on, you know, Andrew McCabe, like everything with my channel, I was super into all that stuff. Turns out my great-grandfather was AG of Manhattan. My great-grandfather was AG. My other great-grandfather <laughs> was, was, um, <laughs> was something else. And <laughs> but he was also Manhattan. And he was something else I'm not gonna mention on the channel. But anyways, I had two great-grandfathers that were power horses, dude, and they're both tied to Manhattan. And I'm the freaking, I'm the grandbaby. I'm the grand, <laughs> I'm the great-grandbaby of them. So my destiny lies in Manhattan, guys. My destiny is in Manhattan. And that's why I'm squaring up right now. The world is, they are preparing, the universe has prepared me right now for my destiny, okay? They're squaring me up and they're getting me ready. So don't, guys, don't, don't be shocked, okay? Don't be shocked <laughs> when I'm, when, when I'm coming through here, okay? Where I end up, okay? Don't be shocked. Because <laughs> I know where I'm going, I can, I can feel it. I can feel it, it's coming through. I'm like a freaking train. I am coming in. <laughs> Like, the great grandfathers are like, they've been preparing me for years now, like years, okay? It's all coming in. Travolta, Wilson Bethel, it's coming in, guys. Coming in. Like, everything that happened to me, 2021, with the freaking FBI guy. I think it was McDonagall, Deripaska. It's coming in. Everything's coming together, guys. All my run ins in the dream state with the Air Force, it all makes sense now. It all freaking makes sense. Everything is coming in. You guys are going to say, you're going to be like, what the hell with this girl? What the hell happened to her? 
she was coming out though she was coming out and i'm coming in i'm coming in like a freaking train i am coming in <laughs> manhattan i'm ready here i come here i come guys i'm coming in for my destiny <laughs> squaring up mano y mano all right guys well um if you guys are interested in supporting my cause here <laughs> you could donate some I appreciate your donations. I, I am behind. I, I owe a phone bill right now, so I might not have a phone in the next couple of days. And then I'm behind on my car payment. So, anyways, I love you guys. Send you guys so much love and blessings. Um, thanks so much for your support here, and I'll talk to you guys.